Hey YouTube. So today we're going to go with the people's choice and I'm going to do a video on using the Raspberry Pi 2 and today we're going to be looking at XBMC or as it's now known as Cody. So we're going to go for the full setup, um, how to get it going and we're also going to be looking at some 1080p footage to see what its performance is like. So for the ultimate media center experience obviously you need a Pi ideally a remote control uh, I've used the Imprex which I do uh, like very much also use also use when I'm not throwing it around a mini keyboard and also uses a touchpad so kind of depends what you type in so the remote's great for quick stuff keyboard's better for the typing stuff obviously using a little wireless N dongle for 720p stuff doesn't really work with 1080 as I proved in other videos works fine on a network cable wireless 720 or lower so let's get going so the first thing you need to do is head over to the uh, open Lek website so openlek.tv head over to downloads and here you need the arm uh, v7 build there for the pi 2 so download that um, 5.03 it's quite a big download about a gig so um, to save time I've already downloaded it so here it is um, what we use is we use uh, a program uh, called WinImage it comes up so the Win32 disk imager quite a popular program google it to get the um, links for it so and all we need to do is go to your desktop or wherever you downloaded it to and then write it out yes now that will write out, it will auto partition the disk as well so it doesn't matter about the size of the uh, SD card so you don't need to worry about that write it out um, it will resize when uh, Cody boots up anyway and we're good to go so let's swing over to the telly so once we turn on the Pi we get the initial splash screen um, we then get a message saying that it's resizing the storage so in my particular case we're using a Samsung 64 gig card um, so this can take sort of four or five minutes so be patient with this bit don't turn it off because you'll end up corrupting your uh, SD card so once this is finished we'll, um, we'll continue this is version 5.0.3 there we go looking good Cody version 14.1 so we come straight into the standard skin confluence so we'll go through the um, standard setup now I'm using a wired connection this time around so we've picked up an IP address so, so that's good and it's already started it's uh, add-on updates so we'll be using Samba so we can connect to Windows shares yeah thank you very much right first thing we're going to do is go into the settings uh, and just make sure for my video output I'm going to change my refresh rate to 60 frames there you go, so that's 60 hertz. Just gives gets it a bit smoother. So far so good actually. It's very um there's no lag at all. Um <coughs> change that to advanced because I always have issues with my audio because I'm moving out to an Onkyo uh, amp. So <coughs> Uh, what you want to need to do if you're using an amp is make sure you enable pass-through 
so that your amp is actually doing your uh, Dolby decoding. So, optimized. So you need to enable your uh, settings for your do uh, Dolby. And that is pretty much it on that side of it. So, so far, so good. There's no delay whatsoever, it's very quick. So far, I'm, I'm quite impressed. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna change the skin to see how quick um, the skin changes. So, go over to get more. And we use a popular one, Aeon Nox. So we'll install that. So there we go, so it's downloading. So while that's coming down, what we'll do is we'll add a movie share. So we go to uh, files, add videos. So what we'll do is we'll just call this uh, Call this kids, kids movies. So we go up to browse. Now, obviously, Cody works exactly the same on here as it does on every other platform. So, to be honest, all this is just standard stuff. Um, so, obviously, we're adding Windows SMB share. Um, I'm going to use. Kids movies, my password, and there you go. I did that in there. So as soon as that's done its index, click OK. Tell it to use the movies. Um, I always enable this because I have all my folder structures in in every every movies in its in its own folder. Um, so make sure you enable that. And let's do a refresh. There we go. Interestingly, my skin didn't apply, so let me just check that. There you go, that's better. Hey! So. <clears throat> Once this is finished, we'll look at some content. Right, so that's finished indexing. So let's have a look at some content. So the first thing I'm gonna do is change it to a view that I like. And let's pick um, Absolutely perfect. So picture quality is exactly the same as my PC media center uh, that I use. Um, it's full 1080p, it's picked up the 24p. Um, the DTS has kicked in. Pi seems to handle everything fine. Yeah, there we go. 
working okay. Let's skip along a bit. Even skipping the um, content is pretty fast. I'm impressed. So one of the great advantages of, of uh, Kodi is it allows you to play um, Blu-ray files directly. So there's no need to convert them. I use Plex as my main media center and because of the way Plex works with the multiple devices and streaming, it doesn't allow you to play these um, the BDMV direct files. They have to be converted to MKV. So one thing I'm particularly interested to see is how well the Pi 2 handles the Blu-ray files. There was a slight delay there. Um, seems to be working. Oh, that's interesting. Skipping corrupts the screen. Not not a big issue, but seems to be playing very smoothly. Pitch quality is amazing. Yep, seems to be working fine to me. So that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching and if you liked give us a thumbs up or leave me a comment and um, if you want to see more then subscribe to my channel and uh, thanks for watching.